Hey YouTubers, this is Ishtiak with you once again. Um, I am a Philadelphia-based event and landscape photographer. You can call me Ish for short. Um, in the previous episodes of this photography blog, we've had four so far. In those episodes, we've looked at how we can process travel photos. We have predominantly used uh, Adobe Lightroom and we haven't gone into so much of a detail. We've mostly, mostly looked at how we can improve a picture uh, globally and then how can we go in and make some local adjustments to improve the pictures. Now in this episode we are going to be working with our first raw file. The reason why is that I want you to see how uh, a raw file is very helpful to you in the sense that it contains so much more information than a JPEG file. So we're going to be working on that. This photo is actually another travel photo it's been taken by another friend of mine who visited the Grand Canyons recently. Um, I've never had the luck to visit there, but it was amazing. It was a privilege to receive a photo from him to kind of work on it, to see how we can, once again, as I said in the previous episodes, uh, bring up the beauty of the picture. So in this photo, we are going to be processing it in Lightroom using the techniques that we have used in the previous ones and then they, uh, we are going to move the picture over to Photoshop and apply some techniques there as well. And with all of that, the target is to see how we can keep working on the picture and this time we'll move from beginner level work to intermediate level work. Uh, we're going to look at how we can use various techniques to improve the photo. So let's look at this wonderful photo in the Grand Canyons. It has been taken near the golden hour Let's go and see how we can improve this. So we are in Lightroom now with uh, another photo. This photo, as I said, was from the Grand Canyon taken by a friend of mine. And uh, the first thing we'll do is just look at the information. Uh, I'm pressing I and I again. And here we see the, uh, the information, the camera settings when the photo was taken. Um, if I were taking this photo, I would have stuck with ISO at 100 and with that ISO value set to make sure that uh, there's there's far less grain and noise in the picture. So with that ISO value, I would have reduced the f-stop to 8 or 9 and then calculated my um, shutter speed from there. And I presume there would have, uh, since we have a, almost a stop left to the right, a stop of light we could play with, I think we would have still gotten a very good picture. So, all right. So let's see what to do with this one. In this picture, um, there's there's warm sunlight, and we want that warm glow, and we see that this area is in shade. And to fix that in white balance, we happen to have something called shade. And as we click on the shade white balance, you see that the entire picture has been warmed up. The temperature has uh, has been set at 7500, and the tint has been pushed to a little bit magenta as well. We're not playing with the exposure right now, not playing with the contrast slider either. But as we did in the previous episodes, as part of our workflow, we close the highlights and we open the shadows. And by that, we reveal a lot more information in the picture. And we hold down Alt or Option and move the white uh, slider to the right until we see a couple of pixels. Let's stop right there. So we have a lot more information now and let's hold down the alter option again and bring the black slider down until we see some, some black points here. So that's where we are as part of our standard workflow. We also notice uh, that there, there are quite a few spots here so we'll need to fix those. Let's take care of this big obvious one first. So there's that, and if we click on the visualize spots with the slider moved all the way to the right, it may be around here when you first start, but as you move, more areas will be revealed and you'll, you'll be able to notice a lot more spots and fix a lot more spots. Okay, I didn't mean for that to be too big. But, um, so yeah, we can do that and we can go ahead and fix these spots. I'm not going to spend too much time here because we had a previous episode where, uh, episode where we looked at various methods of um, fixing 
spots using Lightroom and uh, Photoshop. So I'm, I'm going to include a link to that and not going to go through all of it or too much of it. Okay, so there we are. There's another one there. Let's see if I can fix just that one. Okay, so that's the spot removal done very quickly. Uh, we continue on. Uh, we can add a little bit of clarity so that we can see the structures better. We can add just a little bit of vibrance because clarity takes out some vibrance. We're not going to be applying any tone curve, uh, not tone curve, we're not going to be applying any split toning to this one, but the tone curve we can uh, put to say medium contrast so, so that there's contrast boost just a little bit. Now you'll notice here that this is a raw file. I'm pressing I again. This is an NEF file. Uh, so this is a raw file and there's a lot more information in this which allows us to do a lot more um, editing and processing than we have been doing in the first four files which were all JPEGs. So from here onward we look at how to work with raw files and bring the most out of those um, those photos. Now when you import a raw file Lightroom automatically puts the sharpening at 25 and in this case we're going to be pushing it just a little bit more and we will also be reducing the noise just a little bit and also let's mask it uh, we've used this before so press down the alt or option and move this slider until you come at a point where the sky is not sharpened so whatever is white is being sharpened so we see the edges and the rims and that's what we want to sharpen so let's put it about there let's come down here and in the lens corrections this is where you'll see a change that you didn't see in the previous JPEG files you'll see some change here you'll see that the moment I click on this the distortion has been fixed because Lightroom knows the profile of the lens that has been used and for that wide angle lens uh, in this case not not a wide angle this was this was actually a, um, a long lens but it fixes whatever whatever distortion is here and also let's click remove chromatic aberration and let's also just push the dehaze slider just a little bit all right so that's where we are and did I straighten the horizon no I did not so pressing down control or uh, not control oops my bad control Z to go out of that so all right so coming here you can either click on this or you can press down command or control in Windows and draw a line and that line will be the one according to which your horizon will be straightened so this is where we are using Lightroom using the uh, the workflow that we have been using um, in the previous uh, four episodes of this photo blog so let's press backspace uh, not backspace backslash to look at the before there there it is so there's the before and here's the after so immediately we see drastic in, in improvement so in this case let's let's take this one step further let's take this one step beyond, beyond the basic editing and try to see how we can improve it in Photoshop so right click edit in edit in Adobe Photoshop okay so let's give it a second to open up in Photoshop it's going to convert the file to a TIFF file from the raw that it was so there it is it's reading the camera raw format and there you go so there's our file um, let's zoom out just a little bit so you can see the whole thing okay so here we are let's unlock the background layer so what we want to do here is see if there's any way that we can improve the contrast of the photo and if there's any way we can we can mix and match or place or work with the, the fantastic foreground and midground and background elements that we have in the picture. So to do that, we are going to be using some adjustment layers. So let's bring this in. So let's create a curves adjustment layer. And what this will allow us to do, did I pick levels by mistake? Let's not do that. So let's create a 
curves adjustment layer. All right, there we go. Um, what this allows you to do, and this is similar to the tone curve that we have applied. We uh, In Lightroom, we applied the defaults, the medium contrast, the strong contrast, um, or just linear, we can leave it there as well. But in this case, we are going to try and play with it. And what we're going to be doing is, let's try to make an S of, a, of some kind and see what happens. That's what increases the contrast of the picture. As you see, immediately there's a lot of difference, a lot of change from where we started. And um, so this is the before, this is the after. So that's what happens here. Now, that's, that's definitely some change, but it also, I like the way it, it applied on the foreground, but I didn't like the way it applied on the background. So what can we do? So here's a mask. So we come to uh, the image menu up top and in image you see apply image. So click on that. Um, let's just pick layer zero and there we have it. So here we have a mask and if we look at the mask what we will see and I'm pressing I, pr I pressed uh, alt or option then clicked on this one. We see that there's there's sort of like a monochrome a black and white version of the picture. And whatever is black is where the curve is not being applied and whatever it's white is where the effect is applied. Now the problem is we did not want the effect in the background to be applied. We wanted it to be applied in the foreground. So what we do is we select this mask and we press control or not control command or control I to invert this. So there we go. So here we have a selective use of a curve on the foreground. Now we want to do something to the background as well. So to do that, we come here, we create another curves adjustment layer. And this time, let's just darken the photo a little bit and see what happens. And as we darken this, you'll notice that there's a very warm, soft, um, yellowish darkening going on in the background. So take that other one out so here's the before here's the after so we like this effect and we want this effect to be in place in the background so let's keep this however what has happened is that it messed with the wonderful foreground that we had so once again click on that come to image click on apply image press ok and if we press Alt or Option, click on the curves, we see that this is one that is mostly applied, um, more heavily applied in the background because that's white and these are dark. So that's what we want to do. Oops, my bad. So let's name these just so we don't confuse what they're doing. And let's name this the... background. Now, if we want to play with this, if we look at this uh, mask and we're not happy with the way it is, we can change it. And to do to, to do that that thing, that change, what we do is we click on this and we click, uh, we press Command or Control L and that brings up the levels dialog for that uh, particular mask. So let's let's play with this and as we move it to the right from here, we notice that in the mask the foreground part is completely black that means there's little or no effect of it on the foreground and we can keep on playing with this to come to a point where not too much of the middle ground is affected as well so let's do that and just just keep it here and of course this is this is inst instructional uh, so you can play around with this until you're happy with what you see so the idea here is that you can come and you can use any of these adjustment layers and from that you can come up with the effect you like and in order to make sure that you like the effect and you would like to apply it in select places you can use a mask. Um, the mask could have been any mask we could have created a mask here and we could have selected black and a brush and we could have just painted and we could have made sure that that particular block does not get any effect applied. But a better way to do that is to use the apply image because there you have 
an image where there's an actual gradient and that's how that's why it will not look out of place that's why it will not look like someone just uh, spilled some paint on it so you want that gradient it helps to have that it makes it look whatever effect you're using um, will be more natural because of that so that's the basics we're doing and let's do something here let's select these two and put these in a group um, let's name it the curves folder and now we are going to be applying something else uh, let's come here and let's click uh, let's select the gradient and in the gradient let's come here and for again since this is instructional I did not uh, go for anything outside of the defaults but let's pick this one this color in this color what we see is we have a gradient going from sort of a cool purplish color to an, uh, an orange warm color so let's select that hit OK you see that it applied on your picture uh, on the image we have so let's click on this again and apply image once again and let's see what happens well we have something very psychedelic it doesn't look very nice but we have a kind of gradient that is consistent with the photo uh, when we started so what we do is we bring down the opacity of it let's bring it down bring it down a little bit more say up to here say about 40 percent the reason why we did this is that we wanted to create a sense of depth we have foreground, we have middle ground, we have background, and we have definitely three very interesting subjects in three different locations. And to create, and that creates depth, of course, but there's another way of creating depth, and that is through color. And as you have this transition from a cool color to a warm color, or a warm color to a cool color, that will create a perception of depth in your photo. So that's something to consider. Again, um, you can play around with this. You can make sure that you have the right colors you like. And there's, it's a very, comp there, there are a lot, lots more details when you're going into color theory, but I'm not going there. I'm only showing you the default. Maybe in a future episode, we're going to cover some of the details and the choices you make and why. But this is a default that's there and it works very fine. So let's have that. And finally, what we are going to be doing is pressing Command, Control, uh, not Command, com uh, Command, Alt, Shift, E. What this does is it creates a, a copy of all visible layers. Um, I believe you can do it from layer as well. Um, you can have Merge Visible, but you can't use this shortcut because then it'll it'll just um, just flatten the whole thing. You're not going to have something different. Uh, what I wanted is a separate layer with everything, every change that has been made, but in a copy, not the original one. Now the reason why I had this is that I want to create a vignette. Um, as you know, in Lightroom there is a slider called post crop vignetting, and we can move that. And as we move it. What you're going to see is an even vignette from all sides and that definitely works perfectly but I wanted to do something with a little more control and uh, I wanted you to show how to do uh, to see how to do this so we in that layer in that vignette layer we selected the rectangular marquee tool and we are going to draw a, a square and intentionally I'm going to make it just a little bit off so that it's different from the standard um, um, uniform one you see so we do that and then we come to the select menu come to modify and then in feather let's yeah it was at 500 let's keep it 500 so let's make a feather like that and then I press delete to delete so as you see in this layer and I'm pressing command D to deselect. So you see, we just deleted here and all you see is, let's see. So this layer only has the edges, just the border. And that's what we wanted. So what we are going to do with this is change the blending mode from normal to multiply. 
And the moment you do that, you have a vignette that's somewhat customized. And of course, we don't want this to be too heavy. Once again, the whole point is to come up with these adjustments and then just turn it down a notch and so that it doesn't look you know, too out of place. It doesn't look too psychedelic. So we select all these layers and we create another group. Let's call this adjustments. So that's where all the adjustments that we made are. So if we hide this, this is where we started and this is where we are. And of course, we can play with these a little more. We can increase the, the light. We can do some dodge and burning if we want. So we, we, can, we can play with that and we'll probably do that in Lightroom. So here we are with, with uh, the adjustments. And then we can, if we want, we can come to File, Save As, and give it a name. Um, okay, Grand Canyon. Let's name it PS for Photoshop. Let's hit Save. And what will happen is this file will be saved, and a copy of this will be available in Lightroom um, within that same folder and same um, catalog that you see. So that's the beautiful thing. You're sending something from Lightroom to Photoshop. It is processed and now when it's going back, it's already automatically there sitting right next to your raw file. Now you could have simply clicked on close and hit save and it would still be there having the same file name with a tiff at the end. Uh, but I find it useful in a, more of a housekeeping, in a, you know, in a housekeeping way to give it a name that I choose. So we're back in Lightroom and here's our photo. So Grand Canyon PS TIFF, that's the file that we were working on. All right, so let's see what we want to do in Lightroom if we want, if you choose to. And continuing along with the double processing we're doing in two different applications, we can come and do some dodging if you like. And this is entirely up to taste. I'm not saying that you should or have to, but we can come and make some changes here to bring out even more. Okay, so there's the dodging. If we choose, um, you can create another one, say burn, and you can come and burn these areas just a little bit, uh, just a touch to, again, create some perception of depth. This is entirely up to taste. But the point is, you can start with a photo in Lightroom, make the basic adjustments, then hop over to Photoshop and apply the various curves the, and the various kinds of adjustment. Um, and once those adjustments are done, and once you're done playing uh, with, with your layers, you can come back to Lightroom and still process any way you want and have the photo you like. So this is done for now. Um, what you can do is next you come to export and in export what I find useful is if you can choose you can choose to export the full size and in order to do that you pick a high quality you sharpen for screen you don't resize or do anything like that that's all nice and good the problem is you export the photo and then you try to upload that to um, to Facebook for example and what will happen is Facebook will reduce the size and once it does that, they have a very bad algorithm which is going to completely butcher your photo. So if your photo needs to be of a reduced size and um, reduced dimensions, it's better that you do it while in Lightroom or in Photoshop using Adobe's algorithm on the full version of the picture, which is in this case a TIFF file. So let's come here and let's reduce the... Um, quality to say 90 and let's say to fit in screen we give it a size of 1600 in long edge so in this case this is the long edge the horizontal um, edge so that is going to be 1600 and it's going to adjust the vertical accordingly or vice versa and sharpen for screen you can choose the amount of sharpening I'm just leaving it standard here uh, showing finder so let's export and give it a few seconds and there it is it's done so if we open this file there we go so there's the photo 
and it's definitely a huge change from where we started and there's a lot that can be done um, I wanted to do, do this in a quick way using the tools that you have at your disposal without buying any plugins because uh, we'll go into plugins later on and for now just as a preview let, let me show you very quickly how I originally processed this so this was the original version of it this is how I did this and instrumental to this processing was uh, the luminosity masks uh, that I got from uh, Tony Kuiper so these are Tony Kuiper actions if you're working on landscape this is probably the best investment you're going to make they've come up with a newer version of this I haven't installed or tried that out but this allows you to create various um, channels and various um, various different kinds of masks and I've used those and used just a few of those and you can very quickly it, it's all made automatically you can very quickly uh, just select each of these and just from there you're going to see the changes and you're going to come across something you like and you can take that as a base and then move up and work according to how you want and finally when it comes to exporting for screen or drastically downsizing a picture uh, they have the save for web option with web sharpening you can just select a dimension and they'll just spit out something that looks wonderful you don't lose any sharpness you don't lose any quality and your picture looks wonderful wherever you post it so uh, they have uh, look him up Tony Kuiper and um, Sean Bagshaw they have wonderful tutorials this is a wonderful thing to have and hopefully in future some of the time I'll I'll walk you through this as well but for now oops, don't save so for now back to Lightroom this is the photo where we started Come on. hating the lag it happens some days there you go so this is where we started and this is where we ended so it's definitely a lot better than where we were and I hope um, you learned some useful techniques to get you started a, with some you know intermediate uh, processing post-processing of landscape pictures um, there are a lot more to go I intend to bring all of that to you in this um, in this blog and if you like this you know what to do like share um, give me a thumbs up let me know what you want me to look at or what kind of techniques and I will try my best to continue along with this and uh, give you, uh, share with you some, some more tips and techniques in the future. Alright, you all have a wonderful time. Thank you so much.